Welcome to our series on how Policy Express can help you manage your policies and other control documents all within Microsoft 365. In this video, I'm going to talk about the create process, which is the first step in our policy lifecycle. And if we can do this, we can drive consistency through the whole process. So what do we mean by creation? Either we're starting with a brand new policy and we want to look at a template, or secondly, maybe we're looking at bringing in policies from an existing system, such as a file share into Policy Express. As part of this process, we're also going to apply some metadata, and that's going to help enable unique numbering, which will happen automatically. But also worth noting, because we're using SharePoint, we're not going to miss out on the collaboration features and version control features which come out of the box. So let's dive into our demo environment and see what this looks like. So I've come into the home page of our demo environment here. As we can see, there's a policy already highlighted on the front page. But right now, we want to go and look at our policy hub and start a new policy. The first view I get is the employee view, which has our policies in PDF format, but we want to go and look at them in Word format, and that's held in our document masters. As you can see, our documents here are in Word format, and there's some metadata attached to them. There's two ways to add new policies. First, I'm going to bring in a policy from an existing system, in my case, a file share, and then I'm going to create one from a template. So over on the left here, I have my policies, which are stored on my own file server. I want to bring those into SharePoint. So let's start with our work from home policy. So I can simply click on the policy and then drag it straight into SharePoint. The highlighted area will automatically apply the department metadata to this document. So let's do that and give that a second. As you can see, it's now uploading. Now, we can see our work from home policy is here. We now need to add some metadata to help us with the classification and numbering. So let's click on edit all. So the document is called work from home policy. We've already put it in the HR department. We now need to give it a type. The reason we have different types is A, to help in search, but B, also to drive if a document should be converted to PDF when it's published or if it would just stay in its native form. The reason you might want to keep something in its native form is if it's a template or a form that you want someone to download and complete. But this is a policy, so we can choose that. We now need an owner, and an owner is going to drive who gets the reminders around this policy. So let's type in my name, Rupert. And then the keywords. Keywords are going to drive the search experience as well. So this is work from home. So it's probably HR and it's going to be part of the employee handbook. So let's apply that. The last thing that we can do, we have what's called an approval type. And this is the workflow that this document will follow for the approval process further down the line. We are going to make this our default process, and that's absolutely fine. And I'll explain what that is in the next video. So we can now save that. And that metadata has now been applied. As you can see, the type here is policy. What you also notice is we're still missing a document number and an next review date. The next review date will be populated automatically once we've completed the first review, and that will move on by a period of time as defined in the workflow. So that's fully customizable. And the document number is going to be pull through in a second based on a process behind the scenes, which is going to pull together the company details, name, the department, in this case, P for policy, and then a unique number in the sequence. So let's give that a second and that will come through. So I've just refreshed the screen. And as you can see, the work from home policy now has its unique document number. And that takes this document ready for approval. But let's consider what happens if we want to start a new policy from scratch. So we simply go to new, we have a policy template uploaded here, and we can use your template as part of this process. And that's going to automatically open up this document in the browser. Now, I know that many people prefer to use the full version of Word on the desktop, and absolutely we can do that as well. So let's click on editing here, and then we can go open in desktop, and then this will open in the desktop. So we're now in the desktop, and as you can see, we have some metadata here, which will be populated automatically as the document goes through the process. And we've had a template here describing what we're looking to have in this policy. Now, currently, the policy is called document. So let's give that a new name and let's call it our B Corp policy. So now we have a right name for the policy. Let's go and close it and add some metadata about it. So we're back here in the browser. And as you can see, our B Corp policy is here. But we now need to add some metadata so we can generate a document number. Again, the same process as before. We click on the document, and this time I'm going to click on details and edit all. 
So we just want to change the title to B Corp policy. Again, it's going to be a policy and the department. And so we're going to repeat this process as we did last time. And this time I'll make the owners uh, Ben. And then we look at our keywords. Now we can add more keywords to this list if they don't exist, but we're going to say how we do business. And we can have multiple keywords too. This time we're going to set the approval type to board. And that means we're going to go for a different approval process, which will help in the next step. And so now you can see we've created our policy and it's moved down to the compliance area. And that's how you create a policy from scratch. Let's just summarize what we've seen there. We had a, started with a policy template and we created a policy from there, but also we showed how we could import a policy and we can use the same approach to import multiple policies. Once we'd added those policies, we then started adding some metadata. We put an owner because that's important to see who gets the reminders about expiring policies. We chose the approval process. In our case, we used two, one is default and one was board. We select a department that was done in one case through the dropdown and another case by tracking over the document into SharePoint. And then we chose the type as well, in which case we chose policy. And that information together came together to build our reference number. And then finally, we added some keywords, which helps drive search. So this completes the creation step of a policy lifecycle. Now, often we see before we go to an approval process, that document will go for consultation and feedback. And then the approval process is the formal sign off. So in the next video, we're going to dive into the approval process.